Congratulations for purchasing your first A Modular Starter System 2. After you've unpacked it from the box, um, you will have the um, modular system and a bunch of accessories um, that I will just quickly explain what they are. So you get a, um, a few packages of different patch wires and you will see how we use them um, in the course of this video. You have a power supply, which is an international power supply with different types of plugs for the different countries. You have a MIDI adapter cable, which you will use to um, connect a MIDI keyboard or a computer MIDI to the A modular system. And you should have received those jumper plugs, which are very, very tiny plugs where you can change the MIDI channel on your system. And I will um, explain how that works at a later stage of this video. So first things first, let's hook up the system to power. And that is very easy. Uh, you see here at the top, the master module has a DC input and just take the power, pl power supply, put the plug in there and attach it to your wall plug. You can see already that a few of the LEDs have switched on. So now your A modular is powered up and ready to go. Just a word of caution. If you use a different type of power supply and not the one that has been delivered with the system, then you have to make sure that the power supply has a center positive plug. There are two different types. Most guitar pedals, for instance, have a center negative plug and that would destroy your system. So you have to make sure that you use a center positive plug or the power supply that has been uh, delivered with the starter system. So where to go from here? Uh, next step is to connect the system to audio. So in order to uh, hear any sound out of your system, you need to connect it to a um, you need to connect it to an audio interface or a mixer. And to do that, you can use the two audio outputs uh, on the master module. Uh, so these two should be connected to either a, a stereo mixer um, in your studio or a recorder. And I will show you a few different options that I have here in my home. The first option is um, using a recorder just like this, which is a very handy and inexpensive field recorder, which has a line input and you could connect um, one of those into the line input on this uh, field recorder. And on the uh, headphone output, you can then listen on your headphone or headphones what you are playing uh, on the system. I can only recommend this. It is very simple to use and it's uh, very inexpensive. The next step would be if you had a audio uh, mixer, a stereo mixer, um, either something like this or at uh, um, any kind woolly in your studio where you connect uh, connect many different devices on the different ports and you can change the um, volume of each of those. So that is another option and then you would have a headphone output on the side here. This particular model is again quite inexpensive. Um, it has stereo ch five stereo channels and um, it's very handy if you want to connect your A modular together with let's say a Volca uh, drum module or something like that. If you want to record um, or listen to the sound on your computer, then you would need to connect it to a USB audio interface. Uh, a very inexpensive option would be this module, which is a Behringer UCA222 audio interface, which accepts um, analog audio inputs here and then has a USB plug to plug into your computer, iPad or iPhone or Android phone. And uh, that is how you can record the output of the A modular with your computer or tablet. 
For the course of this video, I will use this audio recorder to record and monitor the sound. So I will just take a stereo cable and put it into the line in here. And then I connect. Um, so this is a splitter cable, which has a mono left and mono right channel and uh, combines them into a stereo cable. And I will put them into the audio outputs one and two. So now I have the left and right channels from my A modular connected to my recorder. I will just put that over to the side here and turn it on. And then I will take my headphones and I will plug in my headphones into the headphone output of the recorder. So now I can listen to the output of the A modular system via the recording device on my headphones. As a word of caution, do not put headphones into the audio jacks uh, directly. You might be uh, damaging your headphones or you might damage the system because these are line outs and um, that is usually not what headphones like. Headphones would like an amplifier. So now that the audio is connected, now we can uh, look at the different modules and um, find out what to do next and how do we get sound out of it and what can we do with all these different modules. So at first I just want to explain each of these modules uh, very shortly and uh, then I will go into the very first basic patch in order to hear any sound. So in a modular system, you have no sound unless you patch everything with a patch wire. That is the very first rule. There are no default connections. There are no standard connections. There are no preset patches. You have to use all the wires to connect the different modules in a way that they uh, send out sound to your audio interface or to your headphones. So in that case, there are various modules that produce an initial sound. Then there are modules that, um, character, that add, add or subtract character from those initial um, source sounds. And then there are modulators that are being used to shape the sounds in a different way, either in shaping the pitch or the, um, the character of the sound or to shape the volume of the sound over time. And at the top here, you have the first three modules, uh, OSC, VCO, and noise, which are the most obvious sound sources in the A modular system. The 2OCD is a two independent oscillator module. This, these are analog oscillators which have different waveforms and they are digitally tuned. The next module is a VCO, also an oscillator, and a, uh, it has the added benefit of having a triangle output, which is a more deeper sound, but also a bit of a lower sound than what the other oscillators can produce. The next model up is a noise module. It adds analog, digital and digital noise and also has a uh, random crackling output for rhythmic random um, uh, things that are going on in your composition. The next module up is very similar to an oscillator, but it is more slow moving. It is in this case a low frequency oscillator and you will use this later to shape the sound in different ways. Then you have two filters, the SV filter and the WASP filter. These two filters are adding a character uh, to the bass sounds in that they uh, strengthen certain frequencies and cutting off other frequencies of the sound. And um, that is being used in sound design. The next module is the uh, dual envelope generator. An envelope is a voltage that is uh, that rises over time uh, and you control the rising time from 0 to 5 volt with the attack knob and the falling time with the decay knob. And um, Changing these two knob positions will make the sound either um, slow moving, like let's say on a violin, or more percussive, 
uh, kind of like a plucking a guitar string or hitting a note on a piano. The last module in this row is a dual VCA, which is a voltage controlled amplifi amplifier. This takes an incoming signal and applies a, um, an amplification or volume control to it. Um, with the CV input, if that is zero, you hear no sound. And if you increase the voltage on the CV input, then you hear more and more of the incoming sound. And this together with the envelope or the LFO um, makes a sound um, more, more natural in what you would expect, let's say, from a piano or an organ or guitar. On the bottom row here, we will have the first module, the beat divider. That takes a MIDI clock signal. A MIDI clock is a very fast moving rhythmic signal that is being used as a um, standard clock source in MIDI uh, connected systems and will create different musical um, variations from it in terms of half notes, quarter notes, uh, 16th notes and so on. So you can use that in your system to create rhythmical variations that are uh, in the same beat as other um, devices that you have in your studio that are also connected via MIDI. The next module up is the sequencer module. You will use this to create uh, eight uh, sequences of eight steps with different pitches. So this is what you can use to produce melodies in your uh, patches. The mixer module takes four inputs and mixes them together into one output. And you can use those attenuators, those knobs, to um, you know, either turn them on or off and make them louder or lower. The logic module takes two input signals, mostly triggers, but you can also put in audio signals and, provide, and um, uh, has as outputs different logical formulas that you can apply to that. Let's say an AND or an XOR or an AND uh, logic gate. They can also be used to invert the incoming signals. Then you have a dual sample and hold module. A sample and hold is quite important in synthesizer music and it has been used for decades in sci-fi in that you have an incoming signal and a trigger and when a trigger is being applied it will sample the um, voltage, the incoming voltage at that point and output it until it receives the next trigger um, and will then output that voltage at that point when the trigger hit. It's very, very good in combination with the noise module to create random voltages that you can use either as a pitch or as in the filter to control the cutoff frequency. Then you have a attenuator, a dual attenuator, which can also give you an inverse of an incoming voltage and can be used to control the signal. Quite handy. Also, when you switch it to plus 5 volt, you can have a static voltage between 0 and 5 volts that uh, can be used in any number of ways in more complex patches. And the last module in the system is the analog delay, and that takes an incoming um, sound and creates an echo effect on it. So these are all the modules in your system. Obviously, uh, also the master module, which gives you power, audio in and out, and a MIDI, um, MIDI connection as well. So let's listen, let's look at the very first basic patch and how do we get a sound out of the system. Okay, so now that we have set up the sound going into the recorder and um, I'm listening to the recorder for, with my headphones, we can start making a first sound. So for that, I would like to use uh, the output of one of this oscillator and just listen to how that sounds like. So I'm just taking a cable and I'm putting it into the um, ramp output of the oscillator and putting it straight into the OSC um, audio uh, 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 one output. And what I can hear now is on one ear, I can hear the sound of the oscillator. And as I said before, 
there's only these are mono, so you only hear it on one ear. So in order to hear that on both ears, I want to take the second output as well and put it into the output number two. And now we have the same noise on same sound on both ears. And uh, this sound is, uh, you can control the pitch with the frequency knob. Or you can also control the, the pitch with an LFO, a um, low frequency oscillator. So let's do that and I put that into the triangle output and put the um, other end into the CV input. So and now you can hear that the LFO is turning on the pitch up and down. Okay, you can also turn this all the way down, much slower. So let's take that out. So we have our first sound. Great. So the next thing we want to do is to be able to attenuate the signal of the sound so we can turn it on and off or make it louder and lower. So for that I will patch the sound into the mixer. Taking that out. And for that I will first patch the sound from the oscillator into the mixer. So taking the output here into the mixer input A1 and then taking the output of the first output of the mixer from the output A into the first audio channel here and taking the second one which is still the same output output A into the second audio to get my stereo signal and now I get the same thing but I can control the volume. So this is usually what I do uh, just to get started when I don't really know what to do. So this obviously isn't very interesting. So the next thing we want to do is to shape the sound in terms of a filter. So to do that I take the output of the oscillator and instead of putting it straight to the mixer I take it and put it into the input of the SV filter. Now an SV filter is, um, or the, the uh, a filter takes, takes away some frequencies um, depending on which output you are going for. The LP output, the low pass filter, will actually only filter out the higher frequencies of a sound, so it will make it more dull or bassy. Uh, the band pass filter will let through a narrow band, but, so filtering out the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies and just retain the midsection. And the high pass filter will actually um, filter out the lower frequencies and only let through the higher frequency. And we'll just have a quick listen to each of those in turn. So for now I just want to patch in the low pass filter output into my mixer. And I will turn down the frequency knob uh, which is uh, called frequency here but it is actually the filter cutoff frequency which is the point at which the filter is um, uh, removing the, the lower frequencies from the input sound. So I'm turning that um, oscillator down to a, a mid-size um, note and then I slowly open up the filter so it's fully closed now you we can't hear a sound but when I open it slowly we can hear more and more of the frequencies coming through. So here we can hear that as I move the cutoff frequency the sound becomes duller and brighter. 
Now let's listen to how it sounds like on the bandpass output. Now I'm moving a midsection of the frequencies through the spectrum. Here it has a very um, subtle effect on the sound. And if we now move to the high pass filter, the high pass filter starts open and it closes. A very, very different effect to the low pass filter. Let's go back to the low pass filter. Now, the next um, um, button or no knob on this filter is the resonance. And the resonance is a little spike or pronounces the edge at the cutoff frequency. So, as you uh, tune through that, it uh, creates a resonant quality in the sound. So let's turn this filter up to uh, just a, above half and turn on the resonance and listen to that. So resonance fully up. So that screaming that you hear is the filter going into self-resonating or self-oscillating mode. So uh, that is, if you put this on, you can actually use a filter even without input as another oscillator by putting it into this resonating mode. Um, it's especially nice if you do this on the high pass filter. A very nice uh, singing voice in a way. Filters are the soul of the synthesizers, whereas the oscillator is the blood that puts, you know, audio signals through the chain. The filter is really adding the character to the sound. And then you have different modulation options as well, who, let's say, provide the heartbeat to um, the sound if you, if, you, if, you, if you want to think like that. Um, different filters have different characteristics. So for instance, if we, instead of the SV filter, use the WASP filter. So let me just patch that into the WASP filter instead. Then you can hear already that even without the resonance, it is a very distinct sound. already very resonant in itself and I haven't even turned up the resonance at all. Very distinct filter and here you can see already that these two filters, although they do 
physically the exact same thing sound very different. So let's move to the next patch in which we will look at how to use the VCA and the envelopes to create sounds that are more plucking sounds like from a guitar or a piano. And to, because so far we have had only a one continuous sound and I would like a sound that starts, um, goes up in volume and then dies down again just as you would have if you play a keyboard and for instance a piano we press a key and uh, um, then it swells up and then dies down again and this is what we patch now. So from the filter instead of going straight to the mixer I would patch the output into the input of the VCA and then I would patch the output of the VCA into the mixer. Now we don't hear a sound because, and even if I turn the knob here, I can't hear a thing because the VCA is a voltage controlled amplifier. So it needs a voltage signal on CV1 to do anything. And uh, uh, one of the things that we could use at this point is to introduce uh, the envelope, uh, which creates a rising voltage, uh, rising and falling voltage um, at a certain trigger signal and we will patch that in in a minute. So the first what I want to do is I want to take the output of the first envelope and I want to patch that into the CV input on the VCA here at the top. And we still don't hear a sound because the envelope needs to be triggered and I can do this with my hand here. Okay. didn't hear a sound because the wasp filter was closed so I'm opening it up now and when I hit the button here I now get my plucky sound and I can change the quality of that sound by changing the attack and decay so if I change the decay closer to zero I hear nothing and if I um, increase the attack time, I will have something more um, like a violin. Where it takes some time for the sound to come in. So instead of pressing the button, I can also um, trigger this from an LFO for instance. So I take the square wave out from the top LFO here and put that into the gate. And then you can hear that it's continuously triggering this envelope and then I can play around with it without having to press the button. This in itself is already um, gives you a lot of possibilities to um, work with the filters and the sound, changing the envelope type. But a, another possibility is to use an LFO is to change how the filter reacts over time. So for instance, if I would patch the bottom LFO to the CV1 input on the WASP filter, which is or controlling or automating the cutoff frequency and I would then change the CV1 button for the modulation depth, I could actually create um, uh, changes on the filter while it's playing without having to do anything. So. 
now you can hear that the LFO is changing the cutoff frequency for me and I don't have to uh, use that knob with my hand anymore. I can change the weight of that change. And if you make that change very fast, you hear an almost metallic sound, which maybe is a little bit unexpected. Again, hours of playtime with this one, especially if you switch to the SV filter, which goes um, into self-oscillating um, mode, you can create a very nice bubbly sounds with that. Moving on, um, the next thing we want to look at while we have plucky sounds is to use the delay and uh, have a look at how can we make that those sounds a bit more spacey or roomy. So, Instead of going straight into the mixer, I will now go into the delay input. And from the delay input, I will take it into the mixer. So from the delay output here, I will take that into the mixer input. And the, and let's um, just turn that modulation here a little bit down again. And let's listen to that. So now I have my plucky sound again. Which is nice. And now the delay uh, has uh, three controls which are quite um, important in the operation. The first control you want to uh, understand is the dry wet. So all the way to the left I hear only the input signal. And as I turn it to the right, I will hear more and more of the processed delayed signal. So if I turn it about just after halfway up, then I will actually hear the influence of the delay. The next important bit is the delay time. So this is how quick the echo comes after the input signal. And if I turn that to the left all the way down, there's hardly any time in between, so you don't really hear a delay. And as I turn it to the right, you hear more and more of a delay. Feedback is an interesting one because at the moment we only hear one, um, one repetition. The feedback will actually add more repetitions.
and suddenly we have a much more interesting sound. You definitely want to um, you, you want to be careful with the feedback to not turn it on too much. Otherwise, you may get an endless feedback and it will turn into an oscillator and will become very loud and could damage um, your equipment or your ears. So the delay is uh, a nice gimmick, but let's stick to the raw sound and um, put that back into the mixer. The next step is how do we create musical notes? And to do that, we can use the sequencer 8. And what the sequencer 8 does is it provides us with um, eight steps. Each step will have a different pitch, or the same pitch, but you can choose a different pitch per step. And you can choose between five different pitches, each of which can be dialed in through these knobs. So you can see four knobs here, and then you have the root node, which is the pitch that is on the oscillator here. So the pitch needs a, a clock, just as an envelope. So I will use the same output on my LFO that is currently tracking the envelope, and I will put that into the clock signal here on the sequencer 8. And now we can see that there's a red LED that goes from step to step and will show you which is the current step. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to take the output of the CV, which is the pitch output or the frequency output, and put that into the CV1 here at the top of the oscillator. So that now controls the pitch of that oscillator. Now I'll turn that a little bit down because these pitches are all pretty high. And um, let's listen to that. So already you can hear a musical um, sequence going here and um, if I change those um, selections here I can change which pitch is being played. So let's put everyone, everything onto number three. So that means, and you can see here, almost every step is on number three. So let's listen to that. And if I change number three here, the pitch changes on every step. change one of these steps to be 4. So you can see how easily you can change the individual pitches on these steps 
without having to tune every single step. You only have to tune these four. Now one thing is that currently we are using the same output of the LFO to trigger the envelope um, and the sequencer 8, but what you usually do is you do not trigger the envelope from the LFO or the clock source, but you actually use the gate output of the sequencer to trigger your envelope, which amounts almost to the same thing, but, but not quite. And I will explain the difference in a minute. So we have the same sequence going, but now if I switch the envelope to gate mode, you hear a slightly cha different change. And the thing is that this outputs a gate, which means it is high for as long as each step is on, which is determined by how long the clock is. And when you have it into gate mode here, then the attack rises to the highest signal and stays there for as long as the gate is open and then falls uh, according to the decay time here, which is different from the other mode, which was a trigger mode, which only kicks it off, rises and falls straight away. And you can see the difference in how that looks like on the little illustrations here. So on gate mode, actually the um, clock a speed determines how long these notes are being held. So, for instance, in gate mode, I can have attack and decay completely on zero and still get a sound. Whereas in trigger mode, I wouldn't hear a sound at all. I would only hear a click and only if I opened the decay a little bit. So this concludes um, the first few basic patches you can do out of the box with your A modular starter system without any other gear. I think there are many, many possibilities here that you can explore, especially if you use a second oscillator or even a third oscillator and the noise source, you can create a huge variety of sounds and um, experiments. In this next and final section of this video, I will explain how to attach a MIDI keyboard um, to the synthesizer and play that um, as, as a normal instrument with uh, a MIDI keyboard. So here I have a Arturia Keystep MIDI keyboard and I'm going to attach that to my A modular with this uh, DIN MIDI cable. And for that in your box with the A modular starter system, you have received this adapter cable, which has a DIN adapter on one side, which I will connect with the MIDI cable from the key step and a TRS at a, um, um, plug on the other side. And that goes into the MIDI in port on the master module. So now that the two keyboards are, that the keyboard is connected to the A modular this way, I would like to, um, what I want is if I press a key here, I want a note to be sound. I want sound coming out of the A modular and I want the pitch to be the pitch according to the key that I'm pressing. So, and at the moment, uh, we can, s so uh, the first thing is the connection and the next thing is which MIDI channel do we send? And the easiest on the A modular, if you're only playing with the A modular, is to switch the channel 
into omni mode. So you can see that here there is a switch uh, from channel to omni and I switch that into omni mode which means it now receives MIDI signals from any channel. And what you can see here as soon as I press a key you will see the gate flashing. A little LED here of the gate that is now flashing and that means that MIDI is now being transferred to the A modular and I can use it. Now how do I use it? Um, behind those gray panels there is a flat ribbon cable that uh, transfers power from the master module to each of those modules in turn but also transports MIDI signals. And those MIDI signals are available on every module where it makes sense to have it. So for instance, on the oscillator, uh, let's, let's use this one here, I have an output called bus CV, and this is actually the pitch information from the MIDI keyboard, uh, which is coming out of here, and which I can plug into the CV input on this oscillator here. So now, if I press a key, then that MIDI note would be transferred from this port here and going now into the CV input of this oscillator here. Now, now I need to patch that in and I just patch that in as we did before into a VCA and from the VCA I plug it into my mixer and now when I turn the mixer up I should hear something. No, I can't hear anything because I still have to open the VCA from a, an envelope. So I patch that in quickly, taking the output of an envelope into the CV in on the VCA. And now what I want is when I press a key, I want that envelope to open. And again, there is a bus gate output, which takes the MIDI uh, signal from the key press and takes it out here and I use that to trigger the gate input on my envelope. And let's turn it to, to trigger first and when I press a key now we hear a sound and we hear pitch changes which is really great. So uh, let's make that sound a little bit more, more plucky. Okay, so this is a trigger. We can turn it into gate mode and then the note will sound for as long as I keep the key pressed. And it would be really nice if that was a little bit lower so, but the VCO is already at the lowest setting here. So on my key step, I just use the octave buttons to switch one or even two octaves lower. Now, it's important to understand that um, you do have to tune your oscillators. So this is probably, if you do have per perfect pitch, I apologize, because you will hear not a perfect C when I press the C key here. And that is because the oscillators are um, uh, freely tunable and you can change in them in whatever way you want. cause and find frequency so you do have to attach a tuner if you want to play in tune with other instruments. But this is how you attach a MIDI keyboard. Um, in this case I can even put in an arpeggiator.
and that all works with MIDI. Now uh, we're currently using the Omni mode, which is probably not ideal if you have other MIDI instruments in your chain or in your studio. So we want to be able to use a, uh, a separate MIDI channel. And if you put the switch from Omni to channel, then it is automatically, if there is nothing patched in here, channel number one. So on my key step, I switch to channel number one and now I can play on ch MIDI channel number one and if channel number one is already being used in your studio by something else, then you can use these uh, little dip switches here or jumper plugs that you have in your bag. And the way these work is you take one of these out and then you uh, plug them into this little jumper box here. And if you plug the first one into where it says 14, then it would not no longer play on channel number one, but it will now play on channel number 14. And if you plug it into the uh, other uh, um, jumper on 15, now it will play on channel 15. And if you put both in on 14 and 15, then it would play on channel number 16. And this is important, especially if you play, for instance, with the Korg Volker sample, which is um, pre hard by hardware, uh, so to speak, pre patched to use up the very first eight channels, one to eight or something like that. So you can't actually use channel number one at all because that would trigger a sound on your Korg Volker sample. So then you can use the channels 14, 15 or 16, which are higher up to play with those kinds of instruments. So this is uh, the end of the um, beginner's tutorial for the A modular starter system. And I hope that was informative that you learned how to use it and are now ready to explore that in your own time and come up with amazing new sounds that no one has heard before. Please, if you have any problems or questions, either contact us through the Tangible Waves website or um, please sign up to the forum um, at, AEModular, at the forum.aemodular.com website. Um, and there's also a description for most modules on the wiki, which is wiki.amodular.com. And there's a lot of online information that you can look up. And the forum especially is a fantastic place to ask questions and to get um, ideas from other people in the AModular community. Thank you very much for your patience and um, in your time and for the purchase of this um, instrument. And I hope you have a lot of fun. And please keep patching and record what you do and let us know what you come up with. Thank you very much for watching.